Alrighty, so today I'm going to talk to you about Canada's Wonderland's biggest flaw. Now, I'm sure a lot of us are thinking the same thing, especially for those of us that visit it on the daily or call this our home park. You kind of know the trends that Canada's Wonderland is about to go through or has been going through over the years. And if this isn't your home park or you don't go here as often as us enthusiasts, I'm sure on the Google reviews or on one of your most recent visits, especially to Halloween Haunt, you've noticed that the park's been extremely overcrowded. Now, that's a good problem to be in, especially for a business coming out of COVID. Uh, so it's only going to get worse from here, unfortunately. Canada's Wonderland has already sold a record number of season passes for the 2023 season, meaning even larger crowds to that to which we just experienced in 2022. That being said, Canada's Wonderland is not designed to handle the crowds. Is this Cedar Fair's problem? Yes. Is this Cedar Fair's fault? Not necessarily. The trends that Cedar Fair has been taking has been to correct the trends or the problems that Paramount has set forward. Infrastructure for Canada's Wonderland is not designed to handle the crowds. This is their biggest flaw. You're going to see this as a big theme in today's video is the infrastructure. When I talk about infrastructure, I'm talking about several things. I'm talking about food and beverage. I'm talking about pathways. I'm talking about just electrical grid, uh, plumbing, all that jazz, and the ride lineup. With Wonderland's ride lineup being so mid-tier, it's almost impossible for them to handle the crowds the way that they should be able to. If this park was designed the way, let's say, Kings Island is right now, there would be less of an issue in terms of queue lines and complaints. Now, I will say, with the trends that Cedar Fair has been taking with this park and the investments that are coming, that I'm aware of, Canada's Wonderland is on track to deal with these problems in a very good way. Um, with that being said, next year it's going to be a nightmare. Let's talk about it. So, topic number one is definitely the mid-tier ride lineup. You have rides like Dragonfire, Vortex, Wild Beast, the Bat, Time Warp, Flight Deck, uh, Mindbuster, and a lot of flat rides that don't have the best capacity. Now, when you are the most attended seasonal theme park in North America, I'm not sure if some of you uh, listeners and viewers in here are aware of that, but Canada's Wonderland is the most attended seasonal theme park in North America. Now, keyword on seasonal, sometimes when I make that comment, a lot of people are like, no, there's, there's no way it's busier than Disney. Seasonal. Um, and you only have three high capacity rides like, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> Leviathan, Behemoth, and Yukon Striker. It's really hard for you to be able to handle the crowds. Now, with that being said, this was 100% a problem that Paramount created. A lot of people do not give Cedar Fair the credit it deserves. Since Cedar Fair has taken over, it has been doing nothing but improving upon the infrastructure of Canada's Wonderland. You have three of some of the highest capacity rides the park could have imagined. Uh, you have a new food and beverage restaurant, Lazy Bear Lodge, that handles the crowds phenomenally. Um, and you just have complete overall park uh, upgrades and there are even more coming but I won't touch on the upgrades that are coming in this video this is simply going to be pointing out Wonderland's biggest flaws um, and going over them so <laughs> you have those roller coasters that just aren't that great in terms of capacity with two train ops or even some of them one train ops and just in terms of just the ride technology behind them it's not going to help with handling these large and increasing crowds that are con going to keep continuing to grow. Outside of that, you have restaurants, the food and beverage department of Canada's Wonderland, that has not been able to keep up with the growing uh, attendance of Canada's Wonderland. For those of you that have visited Canada's Wonderland um, and not been to Lazy Bear Lodge, the restaurants have a huge problem. It's about an hour, an hour and a half to get your food. My biggest piece of advice for anyone watching this video, next year, 2023 season, the season that's going to start in end of April, uh, go to Lazy Bear Lodge for your food. If the lineup is out the door, do not worry. You'll have your food in 20 minutes. Don't wait an hour, an hour and a half for any of the food at the other restaurants. It's garbage, um, and you will be waiting an hour, an hour and a half. Lazy Bear Lodge, no matter the line, you'll have it in 30 minutes, and it's really good quality for about the same price. So that's my 
best advice I could give you. Lazy Bear Lodge right next to the mountain. Check it out. Um, with that being said, there is going to be more upgrades for the food and beverage throughout the years. Um, and it's going to be a continuing factor in terms of investments. So it will be improved upon. I know it is really frustrating as a guest right now to go to the park and not be able to get your food or drinks in a timely fashion. Add in the staffing problem that Canada's Wonderland had this year, like every business in Ontario, and it was a nightmare. So I know a lot of us have been going to the park or have gone to the park in 2022 and had a really poor experience. Again, multiple factors added in together. It is being dealt with. I can already tell you right now, Canada's Wonderland is offering a really healthy competitive wage to their employees in 2023. Definitely check out their hiring um, dashboard on canadaswonderland.com slash jobs, something like that. Uh, and they have positions all starting around $17 an hour. That's really competitive in the market now. Um, and I really look forward to seeing if this helps with some of the uh, hiring, training, and staffing problems that Canada's Wonderland faced in 2022. Um, so food and beverage and rides is now tackled. Now add in infrastructure. So Canada's Wonderland isn't exactly the best designed park. Now with that being said, the layout of the park I find actually to be one of the best in the industry. It's actually led to me um, having really poor experiences at other parks that maybe have better ride lineups. I really like Canada's Wonderland's layout. It's almost like a circle with inter-pathways that connect the outer circle. So getting around the park is extremely easy. And the park has done a phenomenal job in terms of always ensuring that they keep that as a core principle. For example, removing Orbiter to have a pathway that connects Behemoth to Yukon. Um, that was an amazing kind of like addition, even though it was just a path. And I look forward to them maintaining that. Now, outside of that, the infrastructure at Canada's Wonderland, like in terms of outdated buildings, restrooms, uh, restaurants and all that. Uh, it, again, it's a really big project that Wonderland is going to continue to work on. Uh, for example, the mountain washrooms are the best washrooms, in my opinions, that I could recommend for you to use. Avoid the front gate ones. Uh, but in terms of that, Wonderland has been working on their electrical grid uh, for a total of four to six years now. And it's going to be a continuous um, infrastructure pro uh, project that the park works on, which leads me to the future. Canada's Wonderland is owned by Cedar Fair. It's an American company that runs world-class theme parks at some of the lowest prices in the industry. If you don't believe me, if you go to Canada's Wonderland, you think it's extremely overpriced look up a Six Flags Park. If you think Canada's Wonderland's food is overpriced, their ticket price is overpriced, and their parking is overpriced, Google a Six Flags Park's pricing in terms of parking, food and beverage, season passes and all that, and honestly, take a seat. Because Canada's Wonderland is one of the lowest priced theme parks in the industry. I don't know what you Canadians think, is a decent price for a theme park visit, but Canada's Wonderland is one of the lowest. I can guarantee that and fight you on that in the comments section down below. Simply use Google and Google a Six Flags Park. With that being said, Cedar Fair is poised to have bring in record uh, attractions to Canada's Wonderland. Again, I'm forecasting a 2025 edition that's gonna be world-class. Um, and uh, you're going to continue to see projects like Lazy Bear Lodge pop up at Canada's Wonderland and upgrades all around. Again, I really look forward to 2023 because they're introducing two rides that I think are phenomenal, even though they're showing signs of not necessarily working towards the problem that is forming at Canada's Wonderland. So, for example, Snoopy's Racing Railway will feature one train operations in the kids area for those of you that visited the kids area in a hot summer day it is extremely overcrowded it would have been really nice to see wonderland invest that extra five to ten million dollars on a much larger kids attraction with that being said i still find it to be a really awesome addition and it's got some really awesome theming that your kids are absolutely gonna love on the other side on the teen and adult side of the park you're gonna have tundra twister this one's world class it's a first of its kind 150 feet tall uh, flat ride and a flat ride is kind of like those spinning rides that are in the ground that you like sit and it literally moves up and down or spins it's it I, that's the best way I could describe it for any general public in here uh, but nonetheless it's gonna be awesome it really is it's gonna be one of the best flat rides in the park in my opinion but I have yet to ride it 
uh, but definitely you're going to want to check that out. So they got some great rides coming in 2023 and 2024 from what the rumor mill is spinning is going to be really awesome as well. Wonderland's going to continue to add rides and work on capacity. Now, take a seat because it is going to take some time for Wonderland to be able to adjust to the crowds, especially with the trends in terms of attendance. With the 2023 season looking to be one of the busiest seasons yet, they aren't ready for it. Um, so just be forewarned, avoid Saturday Sundays if you can. Go on a Friday night, go on a Sunday even. Avoid the Saturdays. It really upsets me when I hear Canadians or Ontarians visiting Canada's Wonderland on a Saturday and then complaining about the crowds. Which one of you has been going to Wonderland over the years and ever gone on a slower Saturday in summer? Stop going on Saturdays. Literally stop going. Go on a Sunday or a Friday or during the week. Regardless, no matter when you go, Wonderland is still going to be poised to be extremely busy and not necessarily ready to handle the crowds. Take my advice, go to Lazy Bear Lodge in terms of food, um, and definitely buy all the add-ons to your season pass and get that gold pass. It really bothers me when I see people buying the regular season pass and then buying tickets to Haunt and Winterfest. You just get the gold pass. Get the gold pass. Honestly, I think that's all I have to say on terms of Wonderland's biggest fails. It's definitely infrastructure and it was caused by Paramount. I know for those of you who are Paramount lovers in here, I really don't get it. I don't see it. But just take a seat. Be patient. Cedar Fair is honestly fixing the problems. Yes, it may not be as quickly as you want, but they have a lot of parks to manage. And Wonderland can only eat up a certain amount of the budget, especially for a publicly traded company that is held to a standard to turn a profit. Um, but yeah, awesome. If you guys have any questions or comments, definitely comment down below um, and definitely check out our merch uh, just down below this video. You should see it. Uh, but thanks so much for supporting the channel and watching the video. Uh, and yeah, see you in tomorrow's video. Have a good one, guys. Bye.